Hi guys, we are here with our second episode of whatever we're gonna call this series regarding being environmentally more conscious about what we do and use in our art space. I have no idea what to call this <laughs> series. I'm filming a whole bunch of these in one day, so you're probably gonna hear that a lot in the next few videos. If I can, I'll cut it out. Anyway, hey everybody. So today in uh, this series, we're gonna talk about palettes and um, reusable palettes. And the whole series is about spending less money, being more environmentally conscious with what we do, using reusable products rather than disposable products, helping to save money, save our space, save the environment, right? A little bit. So hang on one second. I needed to grab this. So while I do have this, which is a cutting board, it's a nylon uh, or plastic cutting board um, intended for the kitchen. I don't use it for the kitchen. I use it for when I'm doing um, serious acrylic painting. Um, and it has a piece of um, parchment paper or freezer paper binder clipped to it just because it makes cleanup a little easier for me. And I usually save the paper and reuse the paper and collage. So that's going to be part of the message here is not only uh, figuring out what to change up in the way you do things to make things um, reusable, but reusing what isn't recyclable. So this parchment paper, once it has acrylic paint on it, it's not recyclable. Um, and it might not be recyclable where I am anyway because it has slightly waxy finish and or the state of Oregon is kind of picky about what paper you recycle. So, um, but that being said, usually by the time I'm done and when I'm using this palette, I'm usually doing a lot of color mixing. And when I'm done, this is usually really full of all kinds of fun colors of paint. Um, I usually scrape off the big blobs. I usually have a random canvas or a big piece of poster board laying around that I'll smear paint on. And at some point that it in itself that big piece of poster board will become a finished piece of artwork. Um, but the paper and what paint is left on it is a great piece of collage. So I'll clip it up somewhere out of the way and let it dry. And then I'll put it in my paint, painting paper bin and I'll either pass it on to one of my design team members or a friend, or I'll use it in collage, or sometimes I'll wrap up happy mail in it or something like that. It makes interesting paper. So that's one thing you could do. Now you don't have to do this. That is, this is a nylon cutting board. You could wash this cutting board off um, after each use. That being said, my current new house currently doesn't have a utility sink. This cutting board's too big for the sink that I do use. So I need to figure out a way that's easier for me to clean it that doesn't use 20 million baby wipes. I do use baby wipes in my art room and paper towels, but I don't use that many of them because once you use them, they're trash. I never reuse them for collage. I know a lot of people do and you definitely could do that. I don't. So I end up with a stack of dried baby wipes. What do I do with them? Throw them away. So I'm trying to not create so much garbage. With this parchment paper, I do, I do use parchment paper and deli paper in my work. So that is something I would use. So for me, covering this with the parchment or deli paper and using that as a base and then just picking it up when I'm done, that works for me. Um, that works really well for me. Sorry, the camera's going in out of focus. It's got nothing to focus on, but something that's white. Um, so that really works for me. For you, you might have access to util utility sink um, and you might be able to, in a safe way, um, get the board clean without sending all the paint remnants down the sewer system. Cause so that's another thing we're going to discuss in a future video. So that's another thing I was trying not to do any more than absolutely, absolutely necessary. So this really works for me for large projects and large paint mixings. However, I also use these. So these are a variety of found objects and things from the kitchen department at different stores, especially Daiso and Target. Um, this is actually our very first set of dishes. <laughs> it's Corel. Um, microwave safe, dishwasher safe. Oh, sorry, Martha Stewart <laughs> um, pattern. It's like, I have, think I have two of these teacups left. That's the only things I have left. Um, I use it generally for water um, or from watering down inks. Sometimes occasionally 
Um, if I have my, I have one that I keep my little small mini torch in when I'm doing um, resin to blow bubbles out. It just keeps it from when it's hot tilting over. You can kind of stand things up in it, but I do use this a lot. Um, these are from Daiso. They're intended for um, sake or soy sauce. Um, I use these a lot. This is a disposable single scoop ice cream cup from Las Vegas. From a trip to, yes, I literally washed it out, put it in my carry-on and brought it home with me. It's a, again, it's a great cup for putting a little water in or watering down some ink in to do some splattering. I love this cup. Um, this is from, these are from, these are, I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see these on camera, but these are from salads. The ready-made salads where you get, you buy the whole kit and then you just dump everything in a bowl and eat it. Um, these are great, that's the same thing, putting watercolors in, watering down ink or paints in and using them, using these as palettes. And they wash up actually pretty well and you're not sending them straight into the trash can. You're at least reusing them at least once before it goes gets thrown away. So that's kind of a theme. Reusing it as much as possible before it does finally go in the trash. These are all from Target. <laughs> um, I love these plates, not only for acrylic paint, but watercolor. All of these I use with watercolor paint. Um, they're different kind of plates. This one's plastic. These are ceramic. Um, they can wipe up with baby wipes or one of my rags that I showed in a prior video. Um, and I can just get the wet rag uh, damp. And especially with the ceramic ones, then just wipe it off, put the rag in the dirty rag bin, the palette's clean, put it away, and I'm good to go. Um, I try not to clean these with a lot of baby wipes or paper towels because then I'm just creating trash and that's not what I'm intending to do. So I try to use a damp rag um, or I go into my um, room that I do use to wash things up with and I have a particular way of washing things so that the water doesn't go down the drain. And I, again, use a rag or a kitchen sponge. We're gonna go over that in a different video, but that's what I do. What do you do? Do you have some ideas of what we could all do to be more environmentally conscious and responsible with our art tools and supplies and how we clean up and how we create art in our space? I would love to hear them in the comments below. If you want to support the free content here on YouTube and over in the Facebook groups, um, you can click on the link tree link in the description below. When you do that, you're going to find uh, places to follow me on social media like Instagram and Twitter. You're also going to find my Amazon affiliate store and um, my Etsy shop, my tip jar, Patreon, and all of that stuff. So click that, uh, click on that and check it out. I would love to hear what you all think. I'm no expert by any stretch of the imagination, but this is what I do and what seems to be at the moment working for me. And um, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell um, icon if you want notifications when new videos come out. And of course, the most important thing, which is go out and have a great day and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. And I'll see you later. Bye, guys.